Mmm, this is so, so good. And let me tell you what else is good. What else is good is the fact that I've been waiting for this moment for the past 10 months. It's finally here and I am ready to showcase my latest exclusive limited edition fountain pen collaboration and uh, ooh, I don't know what to say more. Let's get going and I'm going to show you. Welcome. It's your host Amy from Penventure. I hope you missed me and I am back with another video. This time it's not a video regarding coffee, so let's move that out of the way and let's turn our attention to what's on the table at this moment. I have here two pen pouches right here and inside of them it is the result of the collective effort um, that spanned through the last few months, if I'm not mistaken, well over six to eight months, almost 10 months. And it is a very interesting writing instrument collection. First of all, this is not a review video, but just like in other videos on the Penventure YouTube channel, I'm going to walk you through all of the design feature of this collection. I'm going to tell you the ideas and the inspiration behind them. I want to tell you a few facts regarding them. We will have a size comparison writing sample with one of the pens because we will have two individual colors. And in the end, I'm going to tell you where you can find these writing instruments if you are interested to own them. And we will end the video. First of all, the box. Well, the box is not here. It is the normal Leonardo Momento Zero Grande box with an ink bottle. You will have to wait another minute before you can see them. The name of this collection is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande 2019 Urushi Limited Edition exclusive to Penventure. And that is a long, long name. Let's start with the one that's closest to me. And it is the one right here. I'm going to move those two aside. And this is the Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Urushi Penventure exclusive in Aka Tamenuri. Before going into the details, I'm going to show you the second pen. I'm going to put this right here just to have them rest securely. This is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande Penventure exclusive Urushi. And this finish is named Midori Tamenuri. So we have Aka Tamenuri and Midori Tamenuri. Now let's start with the overall idea of this project. Well, the idea came to me a few months ago. I was thinking about my usual passion in regards of collecting Leonardo Officina Italiana Fondo Bands. And I've spoken with Salvatore and uh, we agreed that he will provide me with the base frame for a limited edition exclusive fountain pen that I can then collaborate with someone else and to apply some Urushi finishes on the fountain pens. We moved on to finding an artist that can apply Urushi lacquer and uh, oh boy have I been a lucky person because I've stumbled upon Michael from uh, Tamenuri Studio and just for reference I'm going to link his social media accounts his Instagram, his website. You will find his details in the description of this video. And also I'm going to use uh, his Instagram and I'm going to try to link it up here so you guys can go there and show some love to this incredible artist. Well, Michael, it is based in Poland and he is a very nice person to work with. And I am happy that I finally uh, have the fruits of his labor in front of me. As you know, first of all, we started with a prototype, which is the Akatamenuri, this fountain pen right here. And uh, Michael made this fountain pen as a prototype for me. The entire collection numbers nine fountain pens, not including this Akatamenuri, which is the prototype. This is the 10 fountain pen. One of those nine fountain pens is with Michael. It is his artist proof fountain pen and the rest, uh, eight of them, four are Akata Manuri and four are Midori Taminuri, which is the green one, Midori. For my, let's just call it uh, the Penventure 
Japan Museum. I always keep one of every single fountain pen that I create. I just want to put them sometime on the wall behind me or a different one and to showcase uh, my legacy. Let's recap. We have a writing instrument collection numbering 10 pens. One is the artist proof. One is my prototype that left us with eight font pens. Four are Midori Tamenuri, which is green. Four are Aka Tamenuri, which means red. From the green ones, one is mine. So we have three green and four red font pens available through PenVenture. Michael just sent me a big email describing all of his techniques and everything that went into creating this uh, collection. I'm not going to go into such such details, but I'm going to try to use some of uh, the clips that he sent me and uh, those uh, showcase the whole process that he went with in creating this collection. I hope the camera picks this color up because this is phenomenal. I don't know if we can capture the true uh, nature of this uh, Midori Tamenuri finish because it is sublime and um, we had great great difficulties trying to photograph these pens for our website. I don't know if it's uh, Urushi or the nature of lacquer and the fact that the color has depth but it was hard for us to capture that on the camera. Now let's get into the details. Actually Tame Nuri it is composed of two different words Tame and Nuri. Tame mean, means pond, Nuri means painting. Actually the idea behind uh, this uh, style of finishes is the fact that you can imagine a pond and the water has different depths and you can see some of the things where the water is uh, deep you cannot see and it's black. As you can see on the edges of each of these two font pens you can see a better image of the pigmented urushi coating. On the Akata Minuri is red, on the Midori Tamenuri is a forest deep green. I've tried to imagine how can an Italian Leonardo of Cina Italiana Monetazor Grande will look like if it was to have the same shape, the same everything, the best features that I like about the fountain pen and to be painted in a flawless Urushi coating. Actually this is what exactly turned up on my table when I got this fountain pens from Michael. The whole idea was very hard to implement because uh, it meant that the fountain pens needed to be sent from Italy the shells, the raw ebonite shells were sent from Italy to myself, from me they were sent in Poland to Michael. Michael did his best to have them uh, coated in Rushi. As you know Rushi as a technique takes a lot of time, patience and a lot of things can go wrong. Each and every single layer needs curing. The fountain bands needed a lot of time spent curing sanding and Michael has patience and he is a master when applying Gurushi to different fountain pens. From Michael they were sent back to me, from me they were sent to Italy for final assembly, from Italy they were sent back to me so you can imagine the logistical nightmare that I've went through in creating this collection. Nevertheless the end result is sublime and it's worth the waiting of many many months that I've had. It's nothing out of the ordinary, it's a 2019 Leonardo Momento Zero Grande, so the size is pretty similar and every single detail of the font pen is there, just like in other Leonardo Officina Italiana font pens. And for a much more clear image, I'm going to use the Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Pura, Although it's a piston filling mechanism and the 2019 uh, Leonardo Monetizer Grande was not a piston, but as you can clearly see there is a ring dividing the barrel from the end knob. On the Rushi there is no ring so the barrel is one continuous piece in ebonite which is Rushi coated and the idea behind the whole concept is to have a continuous blank canvas for the Rushi coating that Michael will apply. I'm not going to say that the idea of having it painted or maybe using some rodden uh, slipped through my mind. 
but I want it to be simply beautiful, aesthetic. This is a more minimalistic style of a fondant pan that I've envisioned. Another key point of the Akata Minuri finish is that this is not made in the more traditional way and I'm going to use another Akata Minuri that I have lying on my table and this is an Akaya. As you can see the top layer of uh, dark kurushi, I think it's amber if I'm not mistaken, leaves less color to show through and we get the red color only on certain edges like here or on the ridge of the finial. On the Leonardo we have a lot more red that's very easily observed and uh, this is something that I've personally asked Michael to do so this is my interpretation of a Akata Menuri finish. This is what I like and I like to see a little bit more red but on the Midori Tamenuri we have black being the top layer and that shows less green. Anyway, you can spot the green, it's there, it's beautiful on the ridges and this is more traditional in the Japanese way. Also, Michael told me that he specially ordered certain urushi types from Japan only for this project alone. Now, let me show you some of the features. As you've seen, we have different trim options. For the Akata Minuri being a red color, I went with a uh, gold color trim clip with the wheel, everything the same. We have the pointy finials, the pointy end finials. It's a screw cap, the nib, which is the 14 karat gold elastic extra fine on my Midori Tamenuri. We have a few nib sizes available for the Midori Tamenuri being a rhodium. We can have anything from extra fine, fine, medium, broad and 1.1 millimeter stub in 14 karat gold. Two specialty nibs, elastic extra fine and elastic fine. Ebonite feeds on both fondant bands. On the Akata Minuri we have less of a nib range because it's gold colored trim and we need to use gold colored nibs. So we will have 14 karat Yovo, extra fine, fine and medium. As you can see we have the same section and this is something that I find very very comfortable for my taste. We have two different uh, dimensions in regards of uh, the section. We have an initial 11 millimeters right here then we have a 13 millimeters at the most thickest point. This is what I find very very comfortable. The nibs are friction fitted with the ebonite feed and uh, as a filling system, we have the glued converter, the big converter. It holds a huge, huge ink volume, 1.2 milliliters of ink, which is plenty enough to get bored before actually finishing the ink inside. As you see, this one is inked. And we have the barrel screwing in just like this. Now, let me show you a side-by-side -side comparison with other fun pants that uh, will show you that the Urushi exclusive Leonardo Momento Zero Grande is a fun pan that is in between the oversize and the small pants. So this is a great, great pan. Here you have a caption and we get to see the fun pan side-by-side -side with different uh, pants. We have the ASC Bologna Extra in Arco bronze, Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Akata Minuri, Leonardo Midori Tamenuri Momento Zero Grande, Visconti Homo Sapiens Pan Venture Exclusive. And here is where I want to say that we've just sold out the Visconti Homo Sapiens Pan Venture Exclusive. That's it, it's done, it's no more. The following font pan is the Cipla Etruria Classic Alter Ego Celluloid. We have the measurements for the font pan capped is 152 millimeters, uncapped is 135 millimeters. The section diameter is 11 millimeters and it goes up to 13 millimeters. The total weight of the font pan is 35 grams capped and fully inked and uncapped is 24 grams. Another thing that I want to mention is the fact that this is a fountain pen that I don't consider using post-it because you can scratch the Urushi lacquer and I don't advise you to post this fountain pen. So that's kind of it. 
it is time to have a writing sample and we are going to let loose of this beautiful elastic extra fine nib and we have the pen and this is the Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Urushi Exclusive Pen Venture. And this is the Midori Tamenuri. And now let's go with the ink. And I have here Pelican. Aqua Marine. Then we have the paper. We we're supposed to have the nib first, but let's go with the paper. My favorite paper, Tomoe River 52 GSM. And the nib, this is the 14 karat gold elastic extra fine. Although it's not an extra fine in true, true size because it's much more fine than you might expect, but it's a wet ink flow, as you can probably see. And uh, let's go with the double pass. It's pretty, pretty wet, and I would consider this um, a wet nib, nothing over the edge or something in regards of a fire hose and I know that all are uh, said in normal writing but being an elastic nib everything is about the flexing capability so let's see if we can squeeze some line variation we do have quite a lot of line variation it is not advertised as being a flex nib, but you do have quite a lot of line variation, if you ask me. And this is a smooth rider overall, very playful, very, very nice nib. Let's go with the usual sentence. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog beautiful creation it is very very balanced it's not very wet you can always adjust nibs to be much more wet but this is kind of the nibs that i currently use at this moment and uh, i've tamed a little bit in regards of uh, my current needs in regards of flow that sums up my creations and um, I think they are beautiful pens. I know that there are a lot of people that pay a close attention to my uh, exclusive editions and I am very, very grateful for those people and not only for those people, anyone who supports Penventure is a true friend of mine and he understands that this is my passion and I express myself through this passion. So the ideas for this fountain pens are mine and um, a big thank you goes out to Michael from Tamenuri Studio. Don't forget to visit his website. If you need something from him, you can find him on Instagram. Again, all of his contact details will be into the description of this video. Go there and set Hey, I'm coming from Emmy, and I just want to say a big thank you for you and for all of your work into the pen community because he deserves so. A big thank you goes out to Salvatore at Leonardo Officina Italiana because he puts up with me every single day since uh, the beginning of uh, his company and mine as well. We started in the same uh, period of time. He is uh, the kind of person that never said no to me, no matter how crazy are my ideas in regards of making pens. So a big part of this uh, project is due to the fact that he um, is uh, open and trusts me and my judgment in regards of going from uh, having an idea to implementing it and to have it into a 
physical writing instrument that you can hold in your hands and write with it. I hope you enjoyed this video and my creations and don't forget if you are interested in owning such a writing instrument you can find uh, the links available in the description of this video you can go there and uh, you can own them they are a very very limited collection and uh, they will go just like this if you want to support me doing videos like this don't forget to subscribe to the Panventure YouTube channel. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comment section down below or write me an email. Down below you'll find also my social media accounts, website, email, everything and anything that you may want. If you're not subscribed yet to the Panventure YouTube channel, you can do that by clicking here and turn the notification bell on. And if you want to see more quality content from Panventure and myself, you can click on this video right here and enjoy. My name is Amy and I'll forward seeing you next video. Take care, stay safe, bye bye.